Man, I have this Nintendo Switch lying around, and only like 30 games I haven't played yet. What is a man with only two dollars to his name to do? Oh, thanks, Switchy Shop! Hold on guys, before the video starts, I have to say something. I really, really hope that you enjoy what you see here. And I also hope that if you enjoyed this a lot, you could uh, watch the whole thing all the way through, like, comment, subscribe, and click the bell for more content like this, you know, the good stuff. Oh, oh, and if you really, really, really liked it, you could probably check out the members-only video of me playing these games live and giving my original thoughts by becoming a member of the channel. You can click the join button below the video to check out that kind of stuff. And with all that hoping out of the way, uh, I hope you still watch the video. Hello everybody, I'm Garrulous64, and I bet you've seen a million videos about people trash-talking games that are worth 99 cents and whatever service you might be looking at. But today's video is not one of those videos, at least not in its entirety. You see, my real mission for today was to find some Switch games for you that are under $10 and could be considered hidden gems, and I think I have found a couple things that you will probably like. And if you don't... I mean, I can't please everyone, that's pretty clear. So now to immediately break my own rule, we're gonna talk about Sonic Forces, but it's okay because in my mind it's only worth ten dollars. Plus I'm sort of obligated to make fun of Sonic Forces at least once a week or else every cell in my body will slowly evaporate one by one. Plus I'm obligated to make fun of Sonic Forces at least once a week or else my entire body will turn into a pumpkin. Plus I'm obligated to make fun of Sonic Forces at least once a week or else Sonic will knock down my door and think that we're friends again. And I really don't want that. Plus, I'm obligated to make fun of Sonic Forces at least once a week, or else... Sega. Plus, I'm also obligated to make fun of Sonic Forces at least once a week, or else I'll lose my amazing comedy powers because I sold my soul to the devil a couple years ago. They really don't like Sonic down there in hell. Probably because playing the games is hell enough. So, what do we have here? It's the newest Sonic game as of November 2021, though, you know what, I hesitate to call it new at this point because it's almost five years old. And that's this many, by the way, I wasn't waving at you. Sonic Forces was advertised by one, bringing back classic Sonic, just like in Sonic Generations, for some 2D segments, which are redundant because modern Sonic still has tons of those. Two, showing off all these old bosses for nostalgia bait and not even giving two of them their own boss fights. And three, adding a custom character creator and a whole new playstyle for the game, which honestly, in my opinion, is the best part of the game because you could make this. My son. I'm sure you've seen a million reviews of this game at this point, so I'm not sure how in-depth I really have to go, but let's just say there are 30 stages in this game, and that might sound impressive before you realize that each stage lasts around 40 seconds and has absolutely no impact on anything whatsoever. It's a case of quantity over quality, which is not the best order for those words to be in. I've played this game through to completion at least three or four times by now, and I cannot tell you a single important thing from any one of these levels that is primarily gameplay-based. Sure, you have, like, flashy QTE segments that are, like, you know, a spectacle to look at maybe the first time, but then every other time you play it, it's just like, oh man, I'm pressing X to win- wait, I mean, you just press X to win anyway. Ooh, maybe not a good example. But I don't know, man. If I wanted to press one button and then feel something because of it, I would just click the uninstall button. This game's visuals are actually fairly decent, but at the same time, it also kind of feels like they siphoned all the charm out of this one, because Sonic lacks a lot of animations that he used to have, and also, things are just kind of dull. Like, we know Eggman took over the world, but that doesn't mean everything has to be boring. We've seen what he makes in his spare time. What this game boils down to is basically Sonic Generations, except nowhere near as good. I can play Green Hill Act 2 in Sonic Generations and feel ten times more fulfilled than playing through the entirety of Sonic Forces. And that's not just senseless YouTuber bias. Sonic Forces just has very little player engagement, and that is a huge problem. And speaking of viewer engagement, I'm gonna talk about another game now that I definitely wouldn't marry. So I'm sure many of you won't be surprised when I say this game was 99 cents, and normally I would not be this aggressive towards something that you could buy with the same amount of money as a McDonald's soda, any size by the way. But Dongo Adventure made one crucial error. According to the eShop listing, it seems that they might have bent the truth a little bit, because there is an entire D missing from this game. I guess you could say it's my fault for just trusting the screenshots on the eShop and, you know, hoping that that was just a certain part of the game, but, you know, if you think like that, you're siding with Dongo, and I guarantee that's not where you want to be in life. 
So getting over my initial disappointment of not playing a 3D platformer starring a funny little rat guy, I made it to the end of the first level and then I was like, alright, see you later, Dongo. This thing controls horribly, the hitboxes are totally messed up all over the place, and most importantly, it just really doesn't add anything to the 2D platforming genre, which is kind of a shame, because I think a game about a rat, you could actually do some really exciting rat things with the game and make it a fun rat game. That's the sequel to Squid Game, by the way. Like, I don't know if this is the dev's first game, but like, regardless, the only place you can go from here is up, especially if you don't pull that eShop stuff again. Because let's be honest, we know they were talking about the graphics because it is a 3D styled game, but they knew exactly what they were doing by putting that in the listing like that. I really do hope they try again someday and improve, but for now, Dongo is Dongstroid. That's, <laughs> oh shit. So after seeing what not to do in your 99 cent game, how about we check out a game that's worth the same price except easily delivers much more? Better go grab that spare dollar you've been saving for emergencies because now we're talking about Tori 3D and Tori 2. You might have actually seen these games going around on Twitter or something because they're incredibly high quality for what the creator is charging for them. Both of the Tori titles are fast-paced 3D platformers, so if you're looking for a longer adventure, this isn't exactly where you want to be. And now comes the part where people might call me a hypocrite for saying Sonic Forces is bad for having short levels and Tori isn't, but you know, Tori's being sold for 99 cents, like you can literally find that shit on the ground outside. How much was Sonic Forces again? Oh, $40? That's weird. What, what's that game's excuse? Like, from my perspective, you could literally pick up both Tori games for around $3, and it'd probably equal about half the runtime of Forces, but easily double the enjoyability. Because, hey, in Tori, you're not just holding one button to win the game. You actually have to do a whole lot. This is called player engagement, guys. It's fun. This is fun. It's a fun game. For 99 cents, can you believe it? The game also has some slight horror elements, and I know people on the internet like that, because it gets spread on Twitter like wildfire every time a bear says boo. And if you didn't think that was enough for 99 cents, Tori also has a couple objectives you can do in each level that lead to unlocking new characters so you can play the levels again in different ways. Tori is literally just the 99 cent gift that keeps on giving. Rising up in price now, for $5 you can check out Spoiler Alert. Yeah, that's kind of a weird title for a game about a chili pepper wearing night armor, right? Well, this is actually a pretty interesting one, because the entire game is played in reverse, where you start at the final boss, and then you go all the way back to the first level to piece together the plot. At the end of the game, or technically the beginning of the game, we see Chili Man rescuing Princess Totally Not Peach, and then heading backwards towards the first level. And since I've played Braid in the past, I called this almost immediately. I'll ever play Braid? Because I'm pretty sure I'm the villain of this game, and it's only taken about six seconds for me to think that. Oh my god, I can't believe he was evil. That's crazy, dude. I can't believe this was just Braid again. Sorry, $5 game. I'm too intelligent for these plot twists. Jumping over to things that actually matter about a game, though, the gameplay. This is an auto-runner where you run in reverse, and you need to unkill and uncollect any enemies or coins that are in your path. It's a pretty simple premise, but for $5, I mean, you know, whatever, dude. I mean, I still would have liked to just, like, walk around on my own, because eventually, I just started propping myself up on my elbows and pressing the A button every so often to jump like this. And I felt bored, but at the same time, I did finish the whole game, so there was something there that was keeping me going. Perhaps that was the captivating mystery plot, because, like, I don't know about you guys, but I'm sure Sherlock Holmes would have been scratching his chin trying to figure this one out. Spoiler alert also has a nice spin on power-ups, where upon collecting these items, it actually makes the game more difficult because you need to actually end up doing more tasks along the way. For example, the Dragon Mask, when you pick that up, you need to catch the fireballs that you use to disintegrate these enemies into dust or else there's a time paradox, and we all know how bad that can be. Since it's also really easy to die in this game, it's very nice that you're able to restart the levels very quickly upon death, sort of like Super Meat Boy, and that just makes it a lot more easy to keep going and stay engaged. So kudos on that, it's a pretty decent game for $5, and it's worth it for like an hour and a half of gameplay, give or take. But finally, we're getting to the surprise gem of the day, and this is one that really caught me off guard, guys. The final game on our list today, what I thought was gonna be a barely passable ripoff, turned out to be an extremely solid Pokemon clone that only costs 10 bucks. We're talking about Nexomon. I had to read it off my phone because I kept messing up the line and I really gotta go. Now I know the first joke out of all of your mouths and I guess uh, the comment section is gonna be that this looks like a mobile game, but joke's on you because it actually is. 
But in another cosmic joke, this game is actually a lot more a hype than Diamond and Pearl are, especially for $60 with barely anything changed. The story begins by coming down from your room and seeing the game's main villain chilling out in your house with your parents, all of them apparently working on a special invention, and no one can tell that this guy is pure evil, despite the fact that he is literally raiding a satanic aura. And as if we needed more proof of that, we step outside and this guy's grunts are literally assaulting your friend Emily and the comic relief she just built. After Atlas here deals with the first grunt, we're given our first Nexomon, and this is where the magic starts. Just look around at this game. Look at how pretty and stylized this thing is. Like, for $10, this is very solid looking, and it's a lot better than that $60 chibi disaster. I do think Diamond and Pearl looks good when you're in battle, but then you get back to the overworld, and it's just like, I'm baby, what happened? Speaking of battles, it's pretty much the exact same thing as Pokemon. Once you get into them, the Nexomon actually have these really appealing designs, and... I think their idle animations are really nice. It's just like, the battle animations themselves are a little lackluster. But I can kind of excuse that, because this is a $10 game. You know, it's not made by a triple-A, multi-billion dollar company that can't seem to just give a couple creatures some specific animations. But you know, enough shade about that. While the battle system's pretty much the same, there are some differences with type matchups. For example, I wasn't expecting the mineral-type Nexamon to be weak against the air-type, but it must be some kind of thing about, like, erosion or something. And then, for example, the fire-type Nexamon are actually strong against the wind-type. And my theory on that is it's probably something about fire thriving in an oxygen-rich environment, and look at me applying logic to a game where literal elemental deities are roaming the earth. Like, I have a little funky candle guy on my team, I can't fight Goku! Got me really curious as to where this story is gonna go because I am vastly underpowered compared to literal superhumans. But that's kind of where some of the charm of this game comes from for me, because we are completely underpowered and not able to do this job whatsoever but we still go out to try and do something about it because who else is gonna do it? Having that agency for the main character is a really nice change from, you know, in Pokemon where you're just a dude that runs around the entire region accidentally taking out an enemy team because you're just trying to become famous. And of course, me being the funny man I am, I can appreciate some good humor, and this game has good humor in droves. This clip is a great example. Did you see that? Like, why would you not want to live in this world at this point? Give me two reasons in the comments you wouldn't want to. I love this clip. When I saw this, I literally cackled. I was like, I wrote this. <laughs> it's just, and I don't even have the part right after that, but literally all of the rangers jump up and they just kick the shit out of this guy. And he's just left in a crater in the ground like Yamcha. And you can talk to him, he's not dead. You can talk to him and he just, he literally just says, you freaks need to leave me alone. <laughs> it's, it's perfect. My one complaint with the game so far is that unlike in some Pokemon games, they block you into one section of each map because they want you to progress the story in a very specific way. So instead of letting you explore and wander into a high level area and get absolutely bodied by whatever's in there, you kind of have to play the game at the game's pace as opposed to your own, which, you know, it doesn't feel like the true RPG experience, but again, I'm having enough fun with it currently that it doesn't matter too much to me. But all in all, I think this game has its charm and it has its drawbacks, but it's not like Pokemon doesn't have its fair share of laziness as well. Though in my opinion, you might be able to squeeze more enjoyment out of paying $10 for Nexomon than paying $60 for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl or whichever order those words are supposed to go in, I don't know. Don't get me wrong guys, I do like Sinnoh a lot, but I'm not gonna pay $60 for remakes that don't change a whole lot when I can get Platinum for a lot less. Or I could just put that $12 towards the Nintendo Switch bargain bin. I mean, you never know what you might find. I'm a firm believer that Nexomon should be in Smash Brothers and the DLC should cost 10 whole dollars. Hey, you made it to the end of the video! Welcome! I sure hope you watched the whole way because if you did, you can let me know down in the comments and now you're in the secret club because not a whole lot of people make it to this point. And if you like this video and you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe, click the bell, follow my Twitter, and join the Discord to keep up with more Switch games and other things that aren't Switch games because I do a lot of things. I'd also like to give a huge thank you to my current supporters who are Noah Wisbios, Chaotic Mercenary, Brady Hilkemeyer, Jaden the Hedgehog, Kaido the Samurai, Danny Lee Dauber, Mike TGC, Bellman019, Dex, T-Bone APH, The Seven Superstars, Crystal, Ty Little Tech Guy, PM13, Chaos, Jeremy, Dork in the Hat, Mega Traffic Cone, and on Patreon we have Noah Wizbios again and John the Real Wow Aluigi. Also a huge thank you to everyone who's supporting me in the $1 tiers, which is super awesome because you also get access 
to those videos I mentioned earlier of me playing the games from today and commentating, sort of like the old style of videos from a really long time ago. You also get access to 20 other blooper videos, which I are just sitting there waiting for you to watch them, which I think are kind of fun. You also get Discord perks. You get to chat in the Discord channel with me and a bunch of other people, and we just have a good time. I talk about like upcoming projects, stuff like that. But anyway, if you're interested in becoming a member, you can either click the card up there for my Patreon or the join button beneath the video. And remember, even a dollar helps. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next time.